change the nature of human beings. This is the notion of white privilege that we keep hearing, particularly on college campuses from the left. And that notion, of course, is utter nonsense. The Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States, they're founded on universal principles that apply to everybody, the principles that we just discussed. Just because human beings have come up short in the past in the United States, and of course they have, of course there's been discrimination against blacks and women and gays and Jews, of course that's true. That doesn't mean right now America is irredeemably racist or institutionally racist. The crime rates across different racial groups in the United States are crime rates not because America is this evil society that causes crime rates to happen, it's because there are individuals within society who are disproportionately grouped in certain areas who commit crimes. There's a very easy way not to go to jail. You worry about the criminal justice system being biased against black people, there's a very easy solution. Fewer black people should commit crimes. I know that sounds rough, but as individuals in a free society, that is the way things work. No one is forcing anybody else to commit a crime. If you want to avoid, you want to look at disproportionate rates of poverty, people like to attribute this to white privilege. Disproportionate rates of poverty are almost solely caused by the largest indicator anyway of intergenerational poverty, single motherhood. It's not white privilege that is causing black people to knock up other black people. It isn't. By the way, it's not white privilege causing white people to knock up other white people. The fact is that those rates have been increasing dramatically since the 1960s, and in those communities, poverty is sky high. And again, th that has nothing to do with race. I mean, the fact is that 7%, 7% of black two-parent families are living in poverty today in the United States. 22% of white single-parent families are living in poverty in the United States. What happened to white privilege? Wouldn't you think that the white privilege system would have somehow found a way to benefit the white single mother? The answer is no, because again, individual decisions in a free society are generally responsible for the individual result. So the notion that human nature can be cured only by a shift in society, that's something that the left believes, and therefore all blame lies with the system. And that's a pretty seductive idea, particularly for people who want to seize the society and use it for revenge. And that's really what so much of politics has become now. You want to use the government as a giant club to wield in revenge at particular political groups, at, politi at particular identity groups. The left's solution to white privilege is government redistributionism, a new governmental system. If we were ever able to overcome the need for basic human resources, we'd all be great. And this is why you see, for example, Barack Obama and his administration actually suggested that the solution to ISIS was to give them jobs. Right? The reason that ISIS was murdering people wasn't because there are a bunch of people in ISIS who believe evil things and murder people. It's because they don't have jobs. It's because they live in a corrupt system. And if the system were just the secular humanistic system of Barack Obama with some high progressive tax rates and some solid bureaucratic jobs available for, for people who chop off people's heads, everything would be fine in ISIS. The left also doesn't believe in the, in the sort of founding notion of rights for individuals absent intervention. They believe that rights actually spring from the collective. So you only have a right to do thing, uh, do, do a thing because the collective says you have the right to do a thing. It doesn't adhere to you as an individual from God. Instead, it comes from the state. They think that rights did not exist before government. Human beings don't have individual rights. We have things that the collective gives us. If we harm the collective, the rights disappear. And so the question becomes not what right do you have. It becomes not, not what right does the government have to invade your right to own an AR-15. The question instead becomes what right do you have to own an AR-15. The burden of proof is on you, the individual, to prove that you have a right. It's not on the collective to demonstrate why they should be allowed to invade your right. Right? This is why the left likes the French Revolution, because the French Declaration of the Rights of Man says, quote, no body nor individual may exercise any authority which does not proceed directly from the nation. Across the nation, you're in serious trouble. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg feels the same way. She says that if she had to create a constitution for a new country, she wouldn't use the Constitution of the United States. She says the South African Constitution is better, because it was a deliberate attempt to have a fundamental instrument of government that embraced basic human rights. What are those rights? Rights that come from the collective, the right to food the right to housing, the right to, wallet, to health care and water and social assistance. But of course those aren't rights. You have to make somebody do something in order to get those things. My wife is a doctor. You don't have a right to her health care. You don't. You have a right to access her health care if you can pay for it and she agrees to it, but you don't have a right to her health care. That's tyranny. It's involuntary servitude. You can't put a gun to my wife's head and tell her that she needs to care for you. But the left believes you can. When they say right to health care, that's what they mean because all rights spring from the collective, and my wife doesn't have the right to say as an individual, I don't want to do this. Only these rights, these, these positive rights, is what the left calls positive rights, as opposed to negative rights. Negative rights are the right to free speech, meaning that you don't get to invade my right to free speech. The left believes not in negative rights, they believe in positive rights, the right that you have to take something away from somebody else.
Obama said the same thing. In 2001, he openly said he regretted that the Constitution was a charter of negative liberties. He hoped that the Constitution could be twisted uh, in favor of these positive rights. And this is, by the way, what the left term social justice, the idea that all rights spring from the collective. Right? If the collective trumps the individual, individual identity doesn't mean anything. All that matters is the collective. You're not an individual responsible for your own behavior. You're a member of a group. You're either a member of a victimizing group or a member of a victimized group. If you're a member of a victim group, you have every collective right to steal from people who are in the victimizing group. Right? This is Mark Lamont Hill, who's a professor at Morehouse College. You see him on Fox News and, and CNN all the time. He says this means that only powerful people can be held accountable for social injustice. He says, only, he says, by the way, he says black people, for example, are not capable of racism. It is impossible for a black person to be racist. Now, that contradicts the evidence, which is that there are black people who are racist, obviously. In fact, there was a, there was a Pew poll from 2013, a Rasmussen poll from 2013, showing that more blacks thought that, more, that a majority of blacks were racist than thought a majority of whites were racist. So blacks fully acknowledge that some black people are racist, right? Just like whites fully acknowledge that some white people are racist. But the idea that, that blacks are incapable of racism, this springs from this social justice idea that you are a member of a collective group, you're not an individual responsible for your own behavior. Okay, finally, the left disagrees about responsibilities from, uh, from human beings. To the left, the only responsibility you have is not to your neighbor, it's not to your family, it's not to your friends, it's to the state. Not just in terms of work or output, but in terms of allegiance. All allegiance to principle, that's meaningless. Allegiance to God, to family, that's an obstacle to your allegiance to the state. This is why all socialist states eventually try to abolish the church, because that's an obstacle. That's something you believe in, but it's not the state. You have no responsibility for your own action because you're a product of the system. You're not perfect. You'll never be perfect so long as we haven't achieved social utopia. Personal responsibility is an extension of white privilege. Freedom in the Western sense is a way of enshrining the status quo. What is real liberty? Real liberty is being able to do whatever you want and then blaming it on society so long as you say you bear allegiance to society. My President Obama, in his second inaugural address, here's what he said. He said, being true to our founding documents does not mean we all define liberty in exactly the same way. This is the same sort of thing that Justice Anthony Kennedy, who was single-handedly responsible for redefining the Constitution, he said, quote, at the heart of liberty is the right to define one's own concept of existence, of meaning, of the universe, and of the mystery of human life, which is rather vague language. But this means that liberty has no real definition outside of stuff I want. Right? Liberty can be anything. Liberty can be this tree. Right? Liberty can be this orange. Liberty can be your car. And we all want to do different stuff, sometimes at the expense of other people's liberty. The left wants subjective definitions of liberty, because if you and I define liberty differently, the only, the only body capable of bridging that gap is the government telling everybody what to do. If I define liberty as something and you define liberty as something, the only thing that matters is what the government defines liberty as, because that's where you get your liberty in the first place. This is why colleges feel the need to police political correctness. Right? The phrase political correctness comes directly from Chairman Mao, seriously. It means that you have to be in line with what the state wants you to think. When your responsibility lies only to the collective, lying is okay so long as you're serving the collective. Cheating is okay. All of that is fine. And those who contradict you, they're the bad guys for challenging your view, for hurting your feelings.